All right. So uh, since last time I have not done anything, I simply um, mirrored on the left side what was on the right side. And uh, oh, by the way, I'll be using, I'll be having those two screenshots on the side because um, at this point, uh, all my detailing will be a lot of rinse and repeat. So I just want to have like a quick access to uh, what I've been working for. And I mean, I have my both, like both of my screens on my side for like extra reference and stuff. But um, like these are going to be like the main references. Uh, yes, it's it's my own characters, but it's what's going to be the most useful for a moment anyway. So, yep. Uh, oops. All right. So let's remove the arms at the back. Um, let's remove the legs. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna remove those little janky legs here. They're kind of dis they're kind of distracting. All right. Actually, that's not true. I don't have only two monitors on my side. I also have my little baby monitor right here. Hmm? I can look at my baby while he's sleeping. Making sure he's all right. Father of the year. <laughs> oh, boy. People know me as somebody that's super loud. And if you're wondering why I'm all whispery, these days, well, it's because of that. Also, it fits with the team soiree. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do that while whispering, kind of like Bob Ross. Huh? I'm gonna be the Bob Ross of 3D. I'm gonna get curly hair, get a big microphone head hair. It's gonna be great. So here, we're gonna hide a little tree right here. Little tree. Right here. Here's a little three. It's going to be our little secret. <laughs> ASMR soiree. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Insectoid skipping like the Yeah, majorly. Eh? <laughs> All right. Oops. All right, that should be enough. So. Uh, yeah, so yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. I hope those side pictures are not going to be too distracting, though. But uh, I guess we will see about that. Sometimes I'm wondering if I should have actually put the symmetry on the arms right now. Kind of like distracting to actually have it uh eh, whatever we'll see we'll see how i feel all right let's get into it so what are we gonna do we're gonna start by splitting splitting the meshes actually you know what i'm a bit uh add right now but uh i'm gonna get rid of those they are way too distracting i still have them in my undo History, getting rid of what's on the, the right side here. Or some of them, I'm simply going to delete them. There we go. Once the arm is going to be finished, I'm going to place them back. But for the moment, I think that this is going to be less distracting. There we go. All right. Now let's get to it for real. So I already have this like thing, this IMM that was placed for the joints. Uh, that's something that I've been using uh, for the, the wasp. Um... So I simply reused it for her, for the mantis that I'm working on right now. Yeah, in, in case like the, it was not obvious, this character's name is Mantis. 
I'm going to figure out the clever way to write her name, like I've been doing uh, with Twitter. And by clever, I mean cheesy. That's what, really what I'm uh, trying to say. All right, placement of things seems good. I think I can start cutting things right now. At least for the uh, the lower arm. Right. Uh, orb crack is the the exact um, the exact same. Um, well, what seems to be the problem when you're using uh, orb crack? What's uh, what's like bothering you with uh, with it? All right, so there's uh, two assets here that um, they're basically just primary shapes. Uh, so instead of like um, going and using the regular sculpting way, I'm going to uh, just um, uh, take some, um, actually insert some some meshes in here that basically have the shape I'm looking for, and I'm going to use a Z remesher to give them the shapes. So this thing is kind of like a capsule shape. So let's go and put it here. Let's try to give it like a some what of a symmetrical um, feel that it's aligned with joint. So you see, I guess it's kind of like following join so that should be good uh the final tip of the cut has a small fall off on it can have seem a result when i like yeah um so uh the i think that the magic uh well i mean the magic the what's going to be useful uh when using orb crack um so that might be a useful tip for everyone uh so let's say you're using uh lazy mouse because uh the the lazy radius because you want the lazy mouse so when you draw a line uh i suggest you, that you stop um using well there's not a lot of resolution on this uh part okay whatever so um never stop a line in on a curve try to always stop it on a straight line because uh, it's going to be easier to restart your line. And what I suggest to do when you want to restart your line is start like here. Let's say you want to continue here. Don't start like, don't try to start right on it. Like, like it can be okay. Like you see right now I did it because I kind of like gauged the right pressure. But like, if you're not really sure, start just a little like before and press really lightly. And when you're getting close to where you need to draw, now push like harder and then you can continue your line like this and if um for example you um you need to make like a corner like it's 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 never going to look like really flawless if you actually do it like this because you're always going to have like a little bit of the tip right here of course you can maybe store morph target and clean those but what i prefer to do is when i do a hard corner is i just do this and then i remove my my radius 
and I just do it by hand with like a small, like a very small like turn like this. From afar, it can look a little bit more like hard surface, not hard surface, but sharp. Uh, that's pretty much like what I would do. Or you can even like just, if you want it even sharper, just do like this, and then just by hand, just go and finish the uh, corner like this with very light uh, brush strokes. That would be pretty much my um, uh, the tip that I would suggest. I hope that can help, Tiago. That's uh, something that um, I think people um, don't realize right away. Thanks for the follow. Uh, one tip, one follow. <laughs> I'll be showing more tips than maybe not all the tips. Wink. But yeah, no, that's uh that's something that people um don't uh I think realize right away um about at least about my technique is that um there's a lot really that comes from just being used to using the the tools and understanding the tools sensibilities. Um yeah. Because like um Since uh, I'm sculpting those assets, uh, it's kind of, um, well, I mean, since I'm sculpting the hard surface, I mean, uh, there, there's a lot that has to do with just like how you're using the brush strokes to make it look like it's clean. Uh, like, you know, I don't really like to depend on Leon um, on uh, like the topology and that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, no, there's um, it's true that there's going to be like a part of like experimentation with um, with the tools. Sorry, I'm kind of like having a hard time finishing that, that train of thought because I'm, I'm trying to think about like how I'm gonna tackle this situation here. I'll just close the gap using uh, thermal topology. Uh, maybe not like this. Yeah, like I said last time, I'm really happy that they added a Z modeler just as like a quick tool to uh, to use like the topology and maneuver with the topology. Like I'm talking like if it was like a new tool, but of course it's not a new tool, but I just reminisce at the time being like, oh, why did they added that? And after all, I was like, okay, yeah, well, after testing it, I was like, that's, that's a cool tool. Cool tool. Cool, cool tool. I'll sculpt uh, the connection and everything here later. Ah, uh, yeah, the gray that I was supposed to use last time. I was a hard. I was having a hard time because my the grays were too similar to the intensity of the green, and I was not able to use masks. I think that gray here is going to work fine. Not the same as. But uh, eh, whatever, gonna be fine. Might be playing with the shape of this a little bit. Hey, no worries, Tiago.
All right, it's going to be, uh, yeah, that's going to be the shape. Let's test with the uh, dynamic subdivision and crease groups. See what's going to be, the, um, yeah, this is going, those are going to be the, uh, the hard corners. I might actually add one hard hedge here because I think that I'm going to lower the shape here like this. So there we go. And uh, let's not make it too creased. Yeah. All right. Maybe I'm even going to consider have this part maybe around or remove the crease. Well, right now it does this like weird funky thing here. Round would not be like a bad idea. But um, yeah, let's stick to that for the moment. I could even like maybe bevel it. We'll see. We will see. Let's go to things now. So this little like gray part where like this, this thing will uh, mesh into, kind of like thinking that I will actually maybe not need to add a subtool here that might be just ill. So let's just uh, paint it in green. Remove the cavity line. Have this. probably going to need some like, details around here to make it feel like it's really clipping in. Uh, a bit like I did with the leg. Like at first, I didn't have all the things that are connecting the parts together, but just by adding the details and the mid details, uh, sometimes you figure out like um, some visual language that makes it feel like it, it's really connecting. Okay, connecting correctly. I mean, those two assets here, they don't connect correctly at the moment. So like there's already going to be some some work needed here. But um, I, I what I, like I probably already said that in the the other streams. But something that I like to do is um, I like to complete the assets around. Sometimes, so let's say we're talking about like this is the main part of this section, which is the uh, well the visible part of the forearm. Well, it has like this like little detail here. It has the the blade that's coming in. It has the elbows, and sometimes I like to work on the um, things around like elbows, this thing, whatever. And it kind of like dictates like how I'm going to merge all of those shapes together with the central part. So uh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna come back on this later. This green piece here. I'm gonna, like I said, work on it later. So we're gonna work on the elbow now. Um, so let's paint that green. Basically, all that should be green now. All right, so we're gonna work on the elbow. So for the elbow, I am actually going to work in an orthographic view. So uh, we're going to already go into a uh, another Z tool. I'll actually be loading the uh, Z tool of um, of the knee knee part. I did it uh, separately. We're gonna do the same. I'm just gonna merge it to this this file here. So you see that the, while doing the knee, I actually had like a portion of the the, the leg that I brought uh, with me. So I'm gonna be doing uh, something similar. All uh, right. So let's uh, insert some stuff here. So I'm gonna want, of course, the elbow part. And uh, let's grab also the uh, arm around it. And the upper arm. The difference between splitting pieces like you did with the leg poly paint mask by intensity versus just classic mask and split like you're doing now, just depending on the situation. Actually, it really just depends on where my brain is at the time. Like, 
both methods are are good and uh, i realize i've been doing it differently but the reality is that it's pretty much pretty much the same i've been using both methods and sometimes i try new methods and i just later realized that it's like pretty much the same as like my first method but i did them i did both of them so much that i just can't like they they just both exist inside of a inside of my mind right now i'm just polishing the edges because i know that if i merge those together they're going to merge back the pex the vertices polishing those all right there we go so now i can merge three of them all right so let's bring oops, oops let's bring the floor remove the perspective unmask what was masked uh let's uh bring this in the middle of the scene so actually bring it a little bit more forward because i want to be able to see the uh the the, the green line here really to try to aim for the middle of the arm let's move things more in the middle because i'm going to be doing a mirror and weld and i want things to be somewhat there we go now let's split this again and this guy here let's make him There and well, there we go. So now we're symmetrical. All right. Something else I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make the the knee visible. I'm going to mirror this like this. This way, I can actually have the knee right in front of me because I'll be repeating the same uh, visual language for both. I'll bo I'll have both of them uh, in my field of view. So uh, right off the bat, uh, I think that I wanted to change the shape of the elbow pad a little bit because I realized that it might actually be just a bit too. Um, short and i might want to have the upper part of the elbow really just like going more inside of the arm like this Probably going to be good. Let's split both of them. And sub tools. And uh, to make those pieces, I'm probably going to do like the knee. Like they are really just like Dynamesh, Z remeshed pieces. So this is a very quick way to, to complete the complete parts. Having them not too technical, simple uh, close hole to fill here. There's that remesh just to make sure that the close hole is uh, metrical by itself. Uh, let's just this bag here. Cut the silhouette correctly. Now this I can Z I can dynamesh. Um, maybe you're, 
a valid question would be why did you close hole like this before dynamishing? Uh, it's because I feel that sometimes dynamishing meshes that are kind of like complex uh, can make uh, zebras crash. Whereas like if you just ask him to close hole, um, it feels like you're asking him to do less, um, less crazy things, the less chances to uh, crash. So uh, me giving brush strokes like this is basically just um, trying to figure out the roundness that I want, uh, but I'll be um, using smoothing to give him a better result uh, later. So same for you. So you know something else I can do? Sometimes you can just mask the border and kind of like crush it on itself like this. And then you can uh, close hole and dynamesh. But it doesn't give you the um, poly group at the back like this. So if you need to do uh, something about the back of the mesh, the mesh, you need to kind of like manually mask it again. Thanks for the follow. Maybe I'm just gonna give it, give this um, another polygroup for a moment in case I wanna select the back again. So I can dynamesh and keep my polygroups. This is because there is no poly paint activated on the model. This is why it's retaining the poly group if I dynamesh. A Akasart. Make us art. Uh, point uh, the O five. Uh, yep. Yep. Doesn't, nothing really happened to me. Uh, but I mean, I downloaded it what yesterday. So, but I've been using it uh, all day today, and uh, no, no crash, no nothing. The if you if like you want to talk about crashes, the one thing that I realized that was like problematic since the last version of ZBrush. And the thing that I, I really am careful with, because the, the my point is that there's not a lot that I am careful with um, with ZBrush anymore. Uh, I find it, I personally, I find it relatively uh, stable, uh, at least uh, enough stable for my tastes. And uh, the thing that I uh, was uh, not uh, super, that's not super stable that I'm just being careful with right now is the cut, the cut curve. Uh, is uh, kind of like uh, giving me some some bad surprises because it like crashes, but it doesn't like even auto save or anything. So it, that's <laughs> it's kind of bad. But it's pretty much the only thing that really gives me those uh, those issues, to be honest. At least I find I don't know. All right. So. I'm not sure how much uh, this character is going to bend the arm, and if it was it was going to bend the arm a lot, I would probably work a lot about how it like looks inside. But I think that this character, like my insectoid character, I've taken the habit of giving them pretty like stoic poses. Um, so so make sure it fits with the other characters. I might also give it a stoic pose. So I'm not going to have to be like really anal about like how it uh, going to be it's going to look inside. But uh, what I'm going to be doing, though, is I'm going to at least give those um, pieces like a, a bit of a feeling that um, there is something inside of them. And one quick way of doing that is simply by um, elongating the backside. Just like this. I'll figure something for uh 
I was gonna. Uh, maybe I should have dragged. Hmm. Yes. Uh, maybe I've done this instead. Do a little bit of blur. Just had a weird, uh, weird movement bug right there. All right, so that's going to be a general shape. Those, there's still something that kind of like bothers me, but uh, I guess we'll figure it out. Same time, it's just the elbows. Let's not panic. It's funny, I was saying I was saying that about like another piece earlier. I think last turn I was talking about the fingers, and I was like, uh, let's not be too anal with the design and stuff. I might actually be repeating that for the entire character. <laughs> not that important. All right, so this way, if the, the joint was around here, if this moves. To... But maybe what I should be doing is actually having the joint visible if it opens like this. But this is something I can actually do if ever this arm will move. And it always happens, by the way. It always happens that I um I move the character into position and then I realize, oh I did not account for that. But it's always something that's uh relatively um that's relatively uh simple to fix because I kind of like give myself um like as you see like I, I kind of like try to think ahead a little bit at least. I never really have like such like like bad bad news, something that doesn't work, something that breaks the design. Because I give it like a minim like a, a minimum of like thought first. And at the end, uh even if there's a bad surprise, it's never really much of a bad surprise. And now I'm just working on the silhouette of things. Ah, you see, from that angle, doesn't work. That doesn't work. And I need to shave this part here. Kind of flecked.
All right, at this point, at this point, I am I think I'm going to give them their final their final mesh. So let's duplicate. Oops. Clone it into another Z tool. Duplicate it. Hit remesh. Hundred polygons should be enough. Doesn't feel like it. oh, hundred polygons. There we go. Subdivide, subdivide, projection shell, project, bigger distance. There you go. There's subdivision, reproject. Got it. Let's do the same for the top part. Clone, duplicate, 100 polygons. You. Subdivide, 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 reproject, greater distance as well. We're good. Now we can um, go back into this to insert both of my new files. I'm going to give it also the same material. So for a second, I'm going to oh, it sees the materials from the thing I have saved on the side. I'm not sure exactly what material this one is. If I do this, OK. It was just my standard material. Good. I try to um, give different kinds of material to different pieces, uh, just to have like a different like reflection and stuff. I think it gives like a nice touch. Go back gray. Since this black is kind of dark. At least for the part that I'm working on it, I'm going to uh, give myself better visualization. So even if I have my final mesh, this doesn't mean that I actually am done with the shape. I just knew that I was not going to deviate so much from this um, shape here. Still, let's give it. And uh, yeah, often something that I like to do is um, just make my planes really like uh, obvious. And um, I'll simply uh, smooth my corners later if I don't want corners to be like too harsh. So um, Yeah, like let's say that like this is the um okay, for example, let's say that this corner here I want it to be kind of like round. It's kind of like round right now, but let's say that I really clean those like planes to be sharp. Well I'll I'll make the corners round again by simply doing like a smooth like this and just having the smooth the good strain. Uh and uh, my smooth will basically dictate the roundness of the edges afterwards. And this is why I keep saying that like the way of working on um, a mesh is always to uh, make the volumes, then make the plane, that make, then make the corners. And when I'm designing, and it's not about the polishing, well, I'll do volumes, then I'll do the corners, and then I'll do the planes. So it's like one, two, three, and one, three, two, basically. So that's how I work.
Yeah, it's so now it's getting pretty clean. Ah, good, 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 good. Uh, hey, Marco, big fan. Thanks you, Voxel Forge. Sup, Marco, big fan. Merci, Pete. Et pas mal blood. <laughs> Just told Pete's actually one of my uh, childhood friends. Uh, what CPU do you use? I actually have no idea. Sorry, it's some quad core or eight core thing. When you first mentioned the mass edge planes at the beginning and then the mass plane edge during polishing, it was one of the most helpful tip I've ever, ever been given. Uh, that's really cool to hear. I'm I'm really glad that it connects. <laughs> All right. I'm still not sure about the um the way that the um the bevel here on the elbow now. Trying it. All right, I guess this is going to be the um, shape of things. So now on to the mid detail. Mid details, I'll be using some one of what we see here, but like, I think that one big mid detail that I'll be adding. I want to see if I cannot make the tip here a little bit pointier. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Why is it so strong? I guess it's because I'm in the steamer. It's really not giving what I'm looking for. Kind of like want to, like an extrusion happening around here. Like that, I guess, maybe. Same thing on the other side. Hmm. That might be a bit um is it too much? Is it too much? Let's see if I erase parts of it. I have a layer here so I can turn that off, record a morph target, then going on the top one, doing the same thing. Layer off, morph target on. I keep that just for oops.
if I keep ah uh, actually you know what first of all do this and I feel like it's an extension of the line it's pretty good it's cool it's cool I like that and this one at the bottom here why should I finish it just a little bit early All right, and um, in will to mimic how the knee looked, I'm simply going to be adding pretty much the same thing. So like this mid detail on the, on the side. This. Here. I have to be careful when adding the um, mask here because this shape it's cutting here is uh, it has its own line flow. So I I must kind of like try to follow it a bit. It doesn't like fight against it too much. Maybe I can actually have the mask go and build the edge here. I'm gonna have let's try. Try to shorten. Yeah, I think it's better like this here. Hey Mario, happy to finally catch the live stream. Could you hover over the material setting so and recreate it? Has super simple, effective look. Oh, this is like the uh, material. This one here. It's just that. It's really the standard-ish thing. Really, nothing special, but it can be useful. There we go. Uh, just an idea out of the blue, but it would be nice if you could make 10 minutes more or less at the beginning of the stream to kind of review what we followers are doing. Rush. What you're doing? Rush to review, like uh, review as in um, like critique? Yeah, it's great to see how you figure the shapes on refined meshes of pitch most of the time. Yeah, yeah, I always let myself kind of like um a little bit more like the design like I I the blocking is really I'm really just trying to get like a sense of the shape in general and I I'll be probably sometimes adding like some some um like details just because like some smaller details just to kind of like know like how things uh, might look in detail later but the real shape of everything um I'm kind of like leaving myself the space to figure out the shape also uh, later. So, yeah. Yeah. It turned on that that's a, it's a fair assessment. Oh, um, so yeah, um, yeah, it, 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 it could be a good thing. Um, I'll be honest that my first, my gut reaction to this idea is on one hand, I'm like, oh, that's true. That could actually be useful to people. Uh, and, um, 
my uh, following gut reaction uh, would be like kind of like makes me realize that um, like if I want to go through this character fast enough, I might actually need really to focus on this. Um, so maybe I would be um, doing that like on its own stream, maybe. Maybe. And could be maybe an idea. Let's add this detail here. Then I'll be adding those little things. Uh, hope you'll probably be done for the elbow. It's close to the edge, but it's probably the uh, best place for it, I realize. Am I going to need one at the bottom? I don't think there's going to be any space at the bottom. I like that. Well, first of all, it has like a weird effect when I'm bringing it back up. So right now it's a little bit near the edge here. I'm not sure if I like it in that. It's all right. Maybe it's actually this one that's a uh... I think it just doesn't have enough of an angle to look uh, for this detail to look good. I think that's the issue. This angle here does better. I think I'm going to have to. Have it as an extrusion. Just here on the top will be fine enough. Got an IMM. For that, I'll need an MT. Like a mesh that doesn't have any materials, uh, subdivisions, I mean. Thanks for the follow. Uh, let's go and get that IMM that's always hiding somewhere in there. This guy here. There you go, right there. Smaller. And split. Make symmetrical. Oh. There you go. The material of this. Okay. Metal kind. This one here. Let's add those knees here. Actually, I'm going to load my alphas. Done that yet. I 
Yeah, also, uh, fire if Fifu's right, uh, it actually might take uh, a long time. Like when I was giving classes, um, when I was giving classes, the uh, when I was doing days where I was going one on one with each student, I had a class of like 35 students, something like that, and um. Just going through the twenty five, the the thirty five students. Even if I was just giving them like five minutes per per students, it was just like taking pretty much like all day for that, and it takes like a lot of time to review. So it's true that I have to be a bit realistic about like what's actually possible. But but that being said, I understand the um. The utility you could have, especially for the community. I think I need a bit more resolution. Smash. Let's try again. Am I gonna need more resolution than that? That's nah, a bit on the edge. Let's uh, subdivide it. Always deactivate your layers before subdividing. Got. This one needs subdivision. See, like this one is, is going to be all right, actually. Details are a bit cramped. This area, though. Be too cramped for the details. All right, let's just finish some cavity lines, some little alphas added. Gonna be enough. Take the orb crack. The bigger. Hmm. Maybe I'm gonna make this more into a yeah. like if it's like an added plate on top. Bottom here. <laughs> it looks like a stupid face. <laughs> All right, maybe I won't do that. It looks like a stupid face. Now it has a tongue. Yeah. Yeah, got to be careful with that. Eh? Wow. All right, well. Yeah, good old times, eh, Medzi? <laughs> yeah, hidden faces. Happens all the time. I know. You know what? <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, sometimes that I, what I realize I, that I'm often, like, hiding, and uh, sometimes it's a bit on purpose, but sometimes it's not on purpose. It's uh, penis and vaginas. Especially when I do like organic monsters, I realize that they're always they always end up being like phallic in some way or I don't know whatever. So, hey, 
Right. Actually, you know what? I just realized I didn't use the same direction for those. Maybe I will be able to uh, get away if I actually did them in that direction here. Well, here I kind of like added the detail already, so fuck it for uh, this part here. It's kind of like better. I don't know if it's going to let me add the cavity line here without. Okay, I think you know what, guys, I'm going to let go of that stupid cavity line. to draw the inside of this thing here your material with like a feel that it's um the inside here is actually the what's under this cover of like black painted metal Let's add a new layer. Because I'm just going to experiment into like adding some alphas just to give a kind of like a look for uh, the inside part here. Uh. Maybe it needs something a little complex. Oof. Yeah, kind of like is trying, is starting to show that this uh, mesh is not so high in motion. Details kind of working. Yeah, man. I think uh, simpler is going to be better. Okay.
There you go. Right now, my mind is just going through different, like, type of details that I know it's kind of, like, hard to say what's going on. I'm just, like, remembering a lot of things that I've seen on, like, real-life references or, like, other model online, trying to, like, apply them, see if it works. That works. It looks like it. Kind of like a connection thing between so uh, that's cool. Cool, 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 cool. Do I want to add something to that? Okay. Okay. For here at least. Here I can add a little something there that's going to be on top. It feels like it's connecting here, or maybe I will add it later once I will join the parts together. And I'll, I'm going to add something here. Uh, I know. There you go. Uh, this way it's going to look like this piece is kind of actually bolted in the arm here. Uh, great. Awesome. Me likey. Add the same kind of like IMM at the... Or maybe I could add like another one that's a bit bigger. Um, ah, no, that's going to be still small. What I'm going to put on the arm, so uh, let's keep with like an IMM that I've been using that's relatively of that size. But maybe let's make it bigger like this. But has some silhouette to it. Good. All right, metal. Boom. There you go. All right. Great, great, great. So that's going to be the elbow. I'm going to see how it looks when it's connected to everything. So let's uh, save this file and now as I'm going to rename that one the elbow. Oop. Save it. Now it's in backup and let's put it back. All right, let's apply the dynamic subdivisions. Let's erase the morph targets, collapse the layers, since I'm be placing all of this on the model, and then I can merge down. There we go. Just gonna clean that up here a bit. Place the elbow. Okay, so first my elbow will need to lift the Z axis. There we go. Actually, I can reconstruct subdivision now. Oops. Oh yeah, and to make sure that I'm placing the elbow um, so it's well aligned with the uh, the rest, I actually forgot, but I have this uh, rectangle here. Oh, it's on the other side. Here, let's place it here. So, is this rectangle well representing of the alignment of the things still? It's kind of skewed. 
this should be fine. So let's try to have the elbow kind of like be aligned with this rectangle as well. I might change things around if I need to. I don't care if it's a little bit offset to it, but I just want to make sure it's, it's kind of like aligned at least. I feel that kind of hard to say because the elbow is not a rectangle. I think that should be all right. All right, let's get rid of that angle. Push this in. There we go. All right. Let's just put it invisible for the moment. You see, like now here, like I got this big empty space, but um, I'll simply rework it so it's not a bad, uh, it's not a big deal. All right. So now we have the central park to work on. I'll work on this piece at the same time. I measure this. polish shapes a little bit. Right, so this piece here is going to be relatively simple because it's um, most of its shape is hidden. So um, as long as um, I think as long as it looks clean and the, the, the its surface is like flowing relatively well, I think I'll be happy. Like the rest of what's around it is already attracting enough attention, so I sure this bevel is continuing. Sure to follow. Oh yeah, uh, people uh, asked me uh, get su subscribed 
and uh, I have done all the requirements that I need except for the streaming in seven days. I mean, streaming seven days in a month. Uh, really gonna have to put in my schedule to um, make a few surprise streams during the uh, days of the week. I want to get this one, but uh, like I'm really trying to keep uh, this on a Wednesday thing. And uh, I mean, if it was just for me, man, I would be doing that like all day. But uh, half of what I'm working on is um, half. 80, 90 percent of what I'm working on is uh, under NDA. Can't show that. And. Uh, Oh well, yeah, it's just hard to, to find time. Plus with the family and everything and big plans that I have in my life right now. I was teasing a little bit at the beginning the stream that a lot of things was happening with my life. And uh, basically my uh, my parents are are moving in closer where I live. I'm helping them with buying the house. So I've been, we've been kind of like shopping for houses and the market right now for houses is just completely bonkers. But it was a lot of like looking for a house, visiting. And earlier was negotiating. But you know what? Today I made an offer. And it was accepted. Yeah. So super happy for my parents, especially. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that was a lot of stress, a lot of stress. You know, it looks lean now. A little bit of H polish, smoothing. All right. Good one, Medzi. Josh, you're saying hair. Uh, where do you live? Merci, Pete. Je vais faire une soirée au chalet. Parce que mes parents habitent. Tu viendras. Bord du lac, puis tout en plus. Là. Merci, SKR. Well, Josh, you're in Seattle, eh? Yes, I actually heard that it was um, it was pretty nuts. I think that it started to get uh, crazier uh, even before us, as far as I uh, as far as I heard. I just want to Pete. Yeah, it's fucking sweet. So you see, like, I've actually cut really the shape that I wanted. And I know that it's not really giving me what I want on this um, side. But, like, if I adjust, I, like, I'm really trying to just get, like, that line to follow. If you adjust afterwards, um, like it'll just make, like, both angle work correctly. Around a little bit. But did I lose too much mass though? No, not really. You see, it's kind of like working well. It doesn't look like uh, this manipulation really hurt the general shape of things. All right, looks good. Looks clean. But if anybody's wondering uh, what I'm saying, sometimes I uh, sometimes I speak not in English. I'm actually speaking in French. I realize there's a lot of uh, people that come to the stream that are uh, French speakers.
I'll need to, actually, I'll, I will save, so be careful. I think that some uh, new medium priced graphic table will be released in future. I actually don't know that. I've been I've been uh, using Cintiqs for a long time and um I've had like the same Cintiq the 21 UX for like a, such a long time and uh re like in a few years uh, ago I bought the um the 27 inches um QX I think. I don't remember the name. And uh, I've been using that for a long time. I'm not really looking at anything else because uh, I because uh, it just looks um, it just works really well. I find thanks for the follow. But um, I I know that I I heard that there was like a couple of um, of um, of things that like uh, that came out uh, somewhat uh, recently. Pretty good tablets that were more affordable because like i mean cintiq uh i mean i was gonna say you pay for the price but i mean it's like extremely good quality but i think uh i think uh some other companies are starting to uh get with the get competitive so uh yeah it's kind of like uh, 3d printers like um back in the day i um I bought the Form 2 from Form Lab, and uh, I bought the Form 2 because that's what my friend had, uh, Furio Tedeschi. Uh, he actually won, uh, he won uh, his at uh, the ZBrush uh, Summit competition, and uh, like he showed me what he he printed with, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so I wanted to to have like the same thing because I wanted the same quality. And uh, later I realized that like like some printers, there are some pretty good printers nowadays that are like much cheaper, much cheaper. I don't know exactly what's the, 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 the name and the brand, but uh, I know that there are some. That should have been a bit more of a hard angle here. I really... So let's confirm that like surface looks good. I'll just put a metal material on it and just see where it has like maybe some parts that are a bit soft, too soft. Here was still a bit too soft. Using a combination of H polish and this smooth brush, a simple smooth brush. Kind of like adjust the planes with H polish and then melt the brush strokes. All right. There's a weird thing happening right here, but uh, I don't think I'm going to go and fight against it. Well, now that the surface is okay, let's make sure the edges are okay. 
Like there's only like this thing here, this like edge that's a bit wonky. I think what I'll do is I'll actually bring this guy more outside of the shape here. All right, that's clean. That's clean. That's clean. Good. 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 All right. Let's make the final mesh for this this part here. Um, going to cut part of it. Well, it won't be needed. No cut. Line mesh that. Let's bring it here in the clone. with 500 polys that remesh. Rosan 8K Mini, I heard that name. Looks, it looks like it's pretty good. Ender 3, probably. Yep, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw Grass City playing with a few um, like different printers and was getting like some pretty cool results, so... The um the form uh lab stuff is like really really high res. It's crazy how high res it is. Also, more soil. Let's go. <laughs> A special reason for this green part to be manually sculpted, not using the retopo panel loop. Oh well, because it doesn't really have any thickness much and when a um an object doesn't really have like a noticeable thickness it's just like a like a shape by itself i really don't bother with like panels and whatnot i'll, I'll just uh, fake the, the 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 thickness by adding like the proper kind of like details and whatnot around it wow that z remesh did not give good results i actually am going to I have to smooth that here before doing as a remesh because the algorithm did not like that. So yeah, it really has to do with like the thicknesses. If like you can really like see actually how thick the material, like the piece is, or if it's like floating, like I will be using the paddle loop and that stuff. But otherwise, like I'm, it's the only reason why really I need to pot like um, very precise topology. But otherwise. The topology that this like Z remesh is going to have, offer me will be more than enough for for my needs. Plus, like polishing the surface, I've practiced it so much with H polish and the smooth brush that I don't feel like that I need to ha actually have like a, a topology that I can like relax to make it look smooth. Uh, it does help for sure, but um, if like the piece is really complex, like I might. Try to get like a nice topology, maybe even like do it by hand. But for this, eh, it's good enough like this. It's not an important, like a, it's not a big piece. You won't notice if there's like some slight imperfection on it. So I'm not wasting, uh, not wasting my time. All right, so now we have a piece that is that remesh. So why did I not leave it simply in Dynamesh? It's because it just helps me, just helps for things to go faster in the in the scene. I might have deleted that piece uh, that, that soon. I actually don't remember um, the, de the details I was gonna put on top. 
own I can actually just uh have it here. Mine going like this, the back, nothing. All right. My music has stopped. All right, no more music. I oh, should change it to something else. Yeah, all right, let's. Let's go with the soundtrack of the game Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Yep, here we go. Keizu, recently I printed a seven centimeter this neck from the movie Chappie. Cool. That's nice. Also Christmas Fletcher. Ten hours of sick of dust groaning. Art, don't know what you mean. Record your blocking phase by any chance. Um no, I did not this character. Eventually I'm thinking of doing it, but um I'm I still still feel that I'm a bit too scatterbrain when I design. And um also when I design I, I cannot talk, so it would be like a really, really silent um uh stream if I do. But uh, I know that people would appreciate it so like of course I'm giving it some some uh, real consideration. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I just want the um, this edge to be uh, gray, just to simulate like a bit like here that like the plate the, the plate finishes, but there's like something under. So uh, I could just draw this part. You know, sometimes what I do also look at that. It's 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 such a like cheap trick, but uh, it's not cheap. But whatever, you'll you'll see what I mean. Um, sometimes I'll duplicate my mesh. I'll uh, make it gray. Where is this one? And um, I'll simply like push it in and move it like until like it gives me like like added thickness right i can also just move the initial mesh here just like duplicating my object gives me the the thickness the thickness thank you for the follow i see you're a fan of the thickness
bow down to the thickness. Step on me thickness. Sometimes I'm wondering why I'm recording myself. I should just not talk. I'm just going around with uh, the arbor crack just to chisel the edge a bit. Also, the um, the gray mesh right now it, it might be uh, a bit like costly. So I might actually later uh, delete part of a uh, Let's take the opportunity to make it a little bit funky as well. Still want to show a little bit though. Cool, cool, cool. So you see, just by adding, by duplicating this um, this part, you kind of like get a um, an added uh, layer. Can really work in your advantage. Cool, cool, cool. Like, I won't need the, the cavity line after all, eh? Because of this. Good. And, uh, yeah, so, like, um, like at some point, I could have maybe, like, delete part of, like, the mesh that's not visible here because uh, it's in case, like, the whole character becomes really costly. But for the moment, it's fine. Fine, it's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay, let's try to do the cavity line then. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I think I'll actually need the cavity line. I'll have it like here, from here to here. Yeah, you see that's gonna be cool. Now let's do it uh clean. This is one is going this one is going to be like a weird curve, so uh yeah, I'll go your question about like how to make it look seamless. That's probably going to be like the time where like I kind of like put that to the test. So I'll like visualize this line here. I'm going to follow Oops. sorry. Let's try again. Oops, ah, I keep um, hitting a button on my pen by accident. It's kind of like it's following it enough, so we're good. I kind of like finished it in the curve, so uh, that's, uh, that's bad. That's bad. Let's 
let's do it in a couple of uh or maybe should I should like then no, I think uh this was bad. Hmm, I think that the line went too far. Oh, I don't have a layer. If I had a layer, I could have put a morph target, but I forgot to put my layer. All right, I'll need to fix that by hand then. Fine, that's fine. I can do that. Just use planar tool to kind of like fill the hole right there. there we go. A bit of age polish. A little bit of smoothing. And like a... Uh, nothing ever happened. As long as you don't say a word to anyone, nobody will know. There's a little bit of artifacts here, but uh, it's fine. Nobody will know. As long as you don't tell anyone, you're part of the secret now. Let's see if I need a cavity line here. Well, that might be starting to be a bit. Uh... All right, let's. How is my the gray thing connecting here? Might be a little bit at the back. I like to do like the same gray thing around here or, oh no, you know what? It's going to be too much gray. I'm actually going to just like leave it like this. I think it's going to be fine. I'll just, uh, So using move with back face mask is pretty good to like adding like thicknesses sometimes when like some parts are maybe uh, not thick enough. We always need more thickness. Clean, 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 clean. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll do a bit of the same gray part here where it actually connects with the uh, these things. Maybe I should um, make sure this part is better integrated. Just want it to follow like the same curve. After all, I won't. I will remove edging.
I'm just really trying to push like this in so it looks like there's a negative space, like fake negative space. This is a this is really a, a deformation, a professional deformation, of making uh, 3D prints. Because if you fake that it actually has like negative space, but in reality it's uh, it's full, well then it's better for printing. At least in my experience, like some of the characters that I print with my printer, uh, I realize that this helps me to not have to like engineer too much before printing. So uh, saves me on uh, on time and it's less of a hassle. Starting to feel like it's actually like all connected and like made to work all together. Slowly. Slowly but surely. Alright, let's do this piece here now. Just see the questions. Um Dave. That was my Oh <laughs> That was a music, uh, music recommendation. All right, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yes, you follow for the thickness, thickness, and classic square alphas for the win. Yes, exactly. The two pillars of chaos masons. <laughs> and get on with the thickness. <laughs> That's good. I like to see. There's a lot of people that like thickness here. Is this your own design? Yes, it's my own design. Uh, it looks so easy when you work on the design different parts. Well, I'm actually after a stream, then I open ZBrush and fart sound. <laughs> well, you know what? Motivation is good. As long as you keep opening ZBrush and uh, at some point uh, it's going to click. Yes, well then the secret, like the people that watch it on YouTube, then they need to keep the secret. Or else uh, it's going to be like in the, oh, thanks for the follow, by the way. Uh, so otherwise it's going to be like in the horror movies. I'm going to come to your house at night and drink all your kombucha. Woo! Actually, there you go. Second one. Like a real douchebag. Very spooky. All right, so for um, for this piece here, I'll be um, I think I'll just add like a little uh, quick little detail with Z Modeler before uh, doing the rest by hand, and uh, I'll just add like a quick little like dent thing here. Get my crease levels back. There. Go tarp crease right here. Good, we're good. I think I'll be adding one edge here just so the edge is a little bit cleaner. I kind of like looks weird, eh? Here, hey, oh my god, that was so Canadian of me. Look weird, eh? I'll probably do it by hand because I want the direction to kind of like not follow the topology. Eh, yeah, there we go. I'm a big boy. I can do it by hand. Eh? Hey.
Right. So I'll start by adding this little line I was talking about earlier. So I'll actually use the transpose line to make to make this line by doing this and control shift. Oops. Ah, it's kind of like it's fucking up here. It's not doing what I want. All right, well then let's do it by polygroup. So let's let's select those two polygroups and then shrink mask row. Ah, uh, now it looks stupid. Heard it. All right, do it like this. Growing the selection. Mask it like this. Unmask, there we go. But, but, look what I'm going to do. Star morph target, and I forgot to put a layer on. God damn. All right, whatever. At least I have my star morph target. All right, well, put that in. Blur my mask, polish. So now it kind of like looks like an orb crack. Do this. Use my morph target to remove this part here. Same on the other side. And then now I can use orb crack to finish the line with the line flow that I wanted. There you go. Ha! Huh. I win. Marker one, ZBrush. Also one. Everybody wins. And uh, since I have my morph target, I can uh, toggle it on and off, put it off with my layer, put it on. And now this detail is in the layer here, like I wanted to at first. Now let's uh, use clip curve to just create some negative space here to make as if joint thing is going in like this. I'll need some more fake. There you go. Red. Um, I'll probably need like a detail here, probably something like this, something bigger, probably a joint somewhere I can use, like uh, on the leg there's one somewhere, let's go and make the leg reappear. Yeah, there we go, this detail right here, let's duplicate this, bring it up arm. There we go. This piece. Let's manipulate objects so it kind of looks like yeah, make it more interesting. So like each time that I modify um, the mesh, like the shape of a clean mesh, 
that's what I called like mid detail basically. Um, of course, it's a term that I coined, so other people might be using different terms. But the idea is when I say about mid details, it's basically like here you did you did your main shape, and before placing like small details, you might want to actually like just play with the shape a little bit more, give it some more originality or whatnot. And um, that's what I call mid detail. So like the fact that I added like this um, extrusion that cuts through the planes around here, that's basically like what I call mid detail. I think um, this alpha here is going to help a lot. I don't know if I ever used it on the model. Actually, it's missing a little bit of something. This like line here feels a little bit boring for me. I think I want to add, like, break its silhouette. And for that, I will simply use this square alpha. Just place it nearly here. The kind of like. See, there we go. So like a little bit more interesting and it's simply like taking an alpha and playing with the placement of it to give like yeah. And I'm going to use an alpha. This one might be a bit too strong right now. There you go. The same alpha that I used uh Cool, cool, cool. Do I need any more details? Well, maybe some small detail here. Let's use the same alpha. A little bit of detail this time here. Make it feel like they're really connecting. Those two pieces are really connecting together. Let's add a indent here and opposite on this piece. Oops. <laughs> Not sure why I did that. I don't have symmetry on. Okay. I think I forgot to press Alt. See, now it feels like it's kind of like connecting well together. All right, and while we are on this gray sub tool here, let's add a little something. I never really use that kind of like or this model, so I'm not sure I want to introduce it now. Like this. There we go, that's nice. Right there as well. Cool, cool, cool.
All right, that's enough indentation to connect those pieces together. This great part here um, might actually be this no, now right here. Those pieces fit well together. The green part here will really not a part. Okay, simply already have up here on the mantis leg, I mean. Let's use especially the The detail that I placing here. It's very yeah. Sixty. I like to have um, some recurrent detail just be of the same size. Have some consistency to it. for this detail here.
There we go. It's the right size. It's like so not important, but uh, sometimes I'm a, I'm a stickler for those details. There we go. Let's uh, save the. Hey, brush with the assist. <laughs> yeah, 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 Pete. <laughs> So uh, that's, uh, I think we're ready to go to that piece right here. Oh, I, did, I already saved. Okay, so this piece here has the uh, synthetic muscles. So um, I actually will need to place those synthetic muscles at some point. Oh, I need the body. I like know what I'm doing. Um, I think I can pretty much like follow my blocking really well for the shape of the the arm, but uh, for like how it connects here, I think I'm just gonna really quick just add some like gray right here. Oops, mouse. Yeah, I'm gonna have some uh, okay. Okay, so now I could actually place the, the cables there. Uh I think I'm going to do that now actually. So this is going to be a part where I will be reusing cables of the leg so maybe grabbing one cable without the the fillet part will not need the that part for this one fly no 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 i will not i'll just grab like that one cable maybe with the um the band nah that's going to be too much detail all right so let's uh, duplicate this Bring it up here. Here the arm. That's kind of weird. My wasp disappeared the, the right side. Okay, first of all, I will remove the um, dynamic subdivision. Body. I'll probably want to reduce the size because I don't want the muscles of the arm to be um, same strength. I'll start with the uh, the tricep here. I'm pretty much going to follow the um, the line flow that I had for the blocking right here. As far as I can remember, I was diligent enough to have something that 
looks like anatomy enough. Thank you, SKR. That's uh, really appreciated. <laughs> yeah, wasp had to go. Rip wasp. Uh, it'll be missed. It will be missed. Yeah, like I was saying at the beginning of the stream, uh, I know that somebody expressed. Um, well, a few people expressed to see um the wasp how it was done and that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, I do uh. I think I'll be showing like other things than just the mantis at some point on the stream. Uh, as I said, right now I'm really just trying to focus on this character. It's uh, bringing me a lot of joy to um, work on it. And uh, the wasp time will come at some point. Thanks for the follow. But um, the thing is, um, like, I'm, um. In case like people are like, oh, I want to see a wasp because I want to see like how like the technique you use to make him. It's like, well, you know, didn't really use use uh much uh, more than what I'm showing you right now in terms of the uh, the techniques and that sort of stuff. Uh, it's pretty much the same, so it wouldn't be like anything new. It's just uh, I know that people appreciate the the design of the wasp. But uh, you gotta let it go, man. It's time for the mantis. The year of the mantis. Okay, I don't need to be that diligent. Wait, this, this is going to be an going to be under. a bit of a different orientation just so that when I put the next one it kind of like fits under am I going to want to have them fit under or over yeah no I'm, I'm, I'm doing it correctly right now By the way, um, when I'm going to be done placing the, uh, the synthetic muscles, I'm going to look at them as a whole and uh, adjust them. Right now, I'm basically just uh, doing a preliminary placement. I have like a duplicated one here. another uh, 
So here. All right, let's grab this here and let's push everything that's orange side here. There you go. Thanks, my Yoka. <laughs> that's cool to that's cool to read, Sebastian. I'm happy that I was able to be a good uh, ambassador for ZBrush with that piece. The um, when I was uh, when I started to work in the industry in 2010, I was working for THQ, and at THQ, this is where I met Cedric with whom I have, uh, with whom I'm running Chaos Masons with. And uh, at um, at the time, yeah, well, he became my, my mentor and he showed me a couple of things. And uh, I wasn't doing like much uh, hard surface at the time because um, I was, um, well, I was still doing hard surface with, uh, with uh, other programs like poly modeling programs and uh it was kind of like uh bugging me and i've always loved like robots and that sort of stuff or whatever but it was just like whoa, so tedious and i really really hated it so i kind of like didn't do much robots because of that or mech things or whatever and uh along came Cedric at thq and he showed me a few tricks in zbrush and uh, I, I, I'm not even sure if like the H polish brush even came, like came out at the time, or had come out. I mean, and um, basically, like you just showed me a couple of things, and I started to to use ZBrush for doing hard surface thing, and uh, it was, it was a blessing to like know those techniques that let me do that, and. Um, Basically, the other, like, at the time, the only other person that I, I was seeing online doing Max and ZBrush was uh, Furio. Furio Tedeschi. And, uh, yeah, I remember, like, uh, we were following him, uh, following his art closely. And uh, little did we know that uh, a few years later, he would... Uh, Montreal and become our friend. He moved back now, but at the time, uh, for a little while, it was cool. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm just really, really focusing on something I should not put so much time on. There's just something that bothers me here about the, uh, the line flow of everything. So, yeah, not super happy with like how the lines are moving here. Nope, I am not not happy with it at all. Thank God for Cedric. Yep, yep, pretty much, pretty much. He was a great mentor. I learned so much from uh, from him. I mean, still learning, but uh, of course, our relationship is. Uh, different now 
so we're more like partners than a anything else. What's happening? Oh, my God. If I bring that muscle at the forefront, will it, would it really help? Uh, you know what? No, never mind that. I am wasting time on something that is not important part. Just try to make the best I can out of this. Marco is getting frustrated. Yeah, let's go with that. That here. Everyone needs a Cedric. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm always learning from uh, from him for sure. Still have some of his own artwork in my reference folder. Actually, I I, I got a reference board right here, and uh, one of them is uh, Eric's art, and actually one of them is Furio's as well. So two per, two people I was talking about right now. I'm not really looking at the reference board on my on my right though. This is. Mainly, like in case, like I'm stuck and I just need to look at something else. But uh, because of the reason why I won't be like using them, it's really because, like I said at the beginning of the stream, it's like I know that the details I'm going to be putting in the visual language, uh, visual language, yeah, because I've been kind of like it's, it was determined while doing the um, the leg, so. That aspect, it's uh, now it's pretty much a rinse and repeat for the rest of the character. Make sure that those muscles are all weaving in. Correctly. I'm also looking at a general volume that each of those muscles are like giving to each other. The line flow as well. I'm like trying to in some way replicate the volume of triceps and whatnot. Thanks for the follow. We have a problem. ZBrush masking allows so tool it hides the masked hides. Oh, it hides. Okay, I understand. It hides it automatically. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I like the feature. Like I like to be able to mask, hide the masks that I love. Actually, I use it often. Uh, but if it hides automatically, yes, that's a problem. I'm sure it's a problem that you can fix by simply uh, starting ZBrush, though. It kind of feels that that kind of like problem. 
I would bet a five bucks on that. Thanks for the the other follow, by the way. Much appreciated. Okay, let's go for that for the synth muscles. All right. Let's have the body back. Technically, the next part would be to split this mesh and start to do the rest that I've did before. This part here is going to be a pain in the ass to figure out what I want to do with it. I feel like the shape is still not there yet. Or maybe I'm being too critical. Now there's something that's like fighting against the other here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I can start working on the shoulder instead of like working on. Shoulder is going to be an easy piece. I might have to like insert maybe like a ball joint here though. Everyone, you'll have to excuse me for one or two minutes because a little doggy wants to go outside. Second, I'll be back in two minutes. I'm back. So yeah, I'm going to be placing the 
the ball joint here. This has a so uh, you know that there's something inside here. And uh, if I decide to actually like try to get some a bit of like negative space on my pieces, well, I'll know that there is like something inside. Should also like show a little bit armpit. Something like that. Well, yeah, the idea that I'm trying to say is that if, like, for example, I'm starting to dig inside here, like, I might want to see that, like, oh, yeah, the ball joint is it's close to here. And then I have to figure out it's this gray part here. Still not really sure. I just did that in the blocking real quick, but maybe it. It's the ball joint that's showing under. Let's try this, and if it's like there's too much like negative space between the body and the arm, I'll just add like a some edge thing, whatever. I think that's uh, how much I'm going to be. Okay, all right, all right. All right. Okay. Now that we are clear about what's under the shoulder. in that shape and uh, separate the shoulder piece. Thank <laughs> you. 
duplicate. I'll keep that part. Let's move. Delete it here. And on that backup mesh for the moment, simply inflate side. Still need to have like some mesh under or right. for the follow. And thanks for the follow again. You know, like this is another piece that I'm actually not even gonna bother with, like panel loop or whatever. Controls that people here. Flip it, do some plain mesh, Z remesh. Bada bing, bada boom. Thanks, Benjamin. This robot really does have fishnets. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically the whole point. He has a long black glove, the fishnets, all that stuff. All that's good stuff. All right, let's dynamic this. Cut the mesh. Polish its surface a little bit. Since like the elbow is not really symmetrical anymore, I think that those two like circles, I'll probably try to not put them. I will try to not like make it look like I was trying to go for symmetry because I'd say that not symmetry I'm going for anymore. Thanks for the follow by the way. So since I'm polishing this piece that is round, giving some H polish, broad strokes, uh, brush strokes in lateral direction. And then uh, I'll do the same, not the opposite direction, but the, um, like at 90 degrees of it. Smooth relax always to erase my brush strokes. Now we have like a clean shape. Now if I use move brush, I won't really be like um, destroying any of my work.
Right. Let's try, let's try to bring back some. Uh, well, I mean, my mesh was uh, very smoothed by my last uh, action. I was trying to really like have like in general have the the shape to be clean. So now I need to bring back some uh, some of the uh, planes that I lost. So that was that was me doing the masses. Mass that was the general shape of the shoulder. Now I am taking care of the planes. So round planes, the straighter planes. Finish with what? Hmm? That's right. The edges. I see you've been listening. Right, let's put a metal material on this and see if it's really clean. Yeah, it's not that bad. Not the cleanest, but not that. I'm mean, wondering if uh, my brush is too strong. Right now. There's a weird warping of the shape here. But, uh, I can live with it. Now the question is, I have I lost some roundness? Like this piece here is like a bit, should have been a bit rounder maybe. So I'll probably just use my move brush to go and get a bit of that roundness back. All right, should be good. Uh, I kind of like, at this point, I couldn't make the final mesh out of that, but I there's like one thing I might want to try for, and it's, um, I'll need to mask this side. Kind of like want to add maybe this kind of a, whoops, going clip circle. Kind of thing, so I can add like a bolt here, like if it's a, Bit more in that angle. I think that'll be a nice addition to uh, shapes of that piece here. Uh, 
And now that this is done, like I, I think at this point I can truly uh, dynamish it. Higher resolution though. I'm gonna slightly fix cells around here that were sketchy. Cut. Now I can put my making my final mesh. Five hundred. I have an art station. Yeah, I have a art station. It's uh Marcopluf.com. Uh Marcopluf.com, no, so that's my website. Just look for that name. Oh yeah, and like uh, Ethereum Neon said, uh, there's a uh, link three also. Thanks, uh, Benjamin. Appreciated. I have worked hard. No projection error. All right, well, that's going to be three hours that I stream. Probably gonna stop it there, go to bed soon. Um, let's just uh, make character reappear. Sure. All right, well, it's missing an arm. Oh no. I think that I. Uh... There we go. Temporarily, it has. It's a right arm blocking again. So, uh, yeah, 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 we're getting there. We are getting there slowly, but surely. So, yep. Yeah. Well, next time I'll be working on the shoulder, finishing the shoulder part. And, uh, then it's going to be the uh, upper arm section. The upper arm section is basically just like one big piece that's going to be not so complicated to finish. But uh, what I'm dreading is to figure out what's going to be this gray part here. I kind of like have the feeling that like you might see me next time uh, bucking with uh, what this is here. Or maybe I'll just find like a super easy solution. We don't know. But uh, yeah, like so, like the biceps, triceps part here, it's going to be pretty easily. So probably that by next stream, I'll actually have the arms, the arm uh, fully completed. And uh, then um, I'll be able to start on the body. Getting pretty exciting.
All right, let's save this. Also, like I always like to uh, have the other ones, the other uh, insectoids laying around, just to see in general how it looks. If they kind of like fit together and that sort of stuff. So far, I'm happy. It's a bit different than the others, not that much. But uh, yeah. Maybe one day I'll have many insectoids. I have like a lot of ideas for like other, uh, other of them. So uh, yeah, maybe one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> Marioka, thank for uh, thanks for the comment. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. <laughs> thanks, Josh. And more exchange. Thanks again, Benjamin. Thanks, Etonian. Hey, no problem. Love to give a bit of my time every week like this. <laughs> I don't have to flex on you like that. <laughs> yeah, the old crew. Yeah, I really try to always have this, uh, this thing that connects them together, even if I they get like different in some aspects. Uh, yeah, I like doing that with groups of characters. Uh, next stream when? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday again. It's uh, really a weekly thing. Cheers, bro. Swagger must well be at to beat. No problem, make us art. Bravo. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, so um, thanks everyone for coming uh, tonight again. That was great. That was uh, another fun time together. Uh, I am tired as hell. But uh, yeah, no, that was great. So yeah, thanks again for uh, coming. That was really appreciated. Thanks for all the great comments uh, on the, here on the chat and on YouTube. It's really appreciated. It really drives me and motivates me to continue doing that. So uh, so that's uh, that's fantastic. Great win-win situation here that, we, uh, that we're having. So uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I hope that you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful week, and uh, we'll see each other uh, next Wednesday. And until then, I wish you a great soirée. Have a good one.